this is dr paul thank you very much for tuning to our channel today as always i invite you to visit our website at www.drpaul.org today i want to talk a few minutes about aspirin a friend requested me to talk about this tonight aspirin was uh, first isolated by a french chemist back in 1853 but its use became dominant around the world since Bayer, the German pharma pharmaceutical company, started its marketing back in 1899. So for the last 110 years, aspirin was used billions and billions of times all over the world and helping billions and billions of the people with its uh, beneficial effects. Now, A stands for acetyl and S stands for spiros that is the german word for salicylic acid so acetyl salicylic acid now a few important points in the pharmacokinetics acetyl salicylic acid is a simple organic acid and it is rapidly absorbed from the stomach so it is absorbed from the stomach and upon uh, um, it, it, it yields a plasma salicylate level within one to two hours. So it is absorbed and is rapidly hydrolyzed. It's a serum half-life is only 15 minutes. So it is uh, absorbed and hydrolyzed to a style and salicylic acid in the blood. Now, the mechanisms of action of uh, aspirin are very, very important. Aspirin irreversibly inhibits platelet cyclooxygenase, I would say COX for the sake of brevity. And it uh, irreversibly inhibits COX-1 in platelets. So platelets have a life of 9 to 10 days So for the rest of their life. So it's uh, the half-life, the life of, sorry, the life of aspirin is like 9 to 10 days. Because it uh, inhibits this platelet uh, aggregation, we use it in many, many conditions like angina, myocardial infarction, or even the long-term use at low dose is associated with low incidence of uh, colon cancer because it is a COX inhibitor. Because it's a COX inhibitor, it stops the proliferation of uh, colon cells and thereby reduces the incidence of colon cancer. Now, no drug is perfect in this world. That's why aspirin also causes some side effects like gastric ulcers, duodenal ulcers, asthma, and rash, gastrointestinal bleeding, and renal toxicity. But thank God they are very, very rare at the antithrombotic doses we use. So it's an antiplatelet drug. That's why it is contraindicated in diseases like uh, hemophilia. Now, during pregnancy, aspirin is not recommended, but recent studies, they show that uh, it might have some valuable effect in uh, the treatment of uh, preeclampsia and eclampsia. So I want you to remember one important thing. Aspirin, it irreversibly stylates the cyclooxygenase 1 and thereby inhibits the formation of thromboxane A2 which is involved in the platelet aggregation. So aspirin is an effective anti-platelet medication. And it is also, it also inhibits vasoconstriction. So it inhibits platelet aggregation, it inhibits uh, um, vasoconstriction. That's why it's very, very useful in the treatment of uh, coronary artery disease. So they remember the indications very, very uh, well, it is useful in the management of angina, evolving myocardial infarction, and the treatment of even a transient cerebral ischemic attacks, acute ischemic stroke, severe carotid artery stenosis, and the primary prevention of uh, um, atherothrombotic disease. So, when aspirin is given in low doses, the complete inhibition of the COX-1 enzyme and hence maximal platelet effect may take like several days. So if you use uh, 70 or 81, it may take uh, a few days to see the effect. But if you use high doses of aspirin, like 160 to 325, you will see that uh, effect within a few hours.
So we use high dose in order to see the effect in a short time, uh, in, um, in just a few uh, hours or even uh, minutes. So aspirin is uh, very, very useful, not for anti-inflammatory properties. We used aspirin all these years for anti-inflammatory properties, but there are better non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. That's why we're not using uh, aspirin now for the anti-inflammatory properties, but for anti-platelet effects, it's always uh, a great drug. Now, let us talk about the poisoning also. Aspirin can uh, um, cause poisoning, especially in the elderly who have been using this medication for many, many years. So if they are confused about the dosing and if they take a lot of it, they might go into a poisoning. And it causes uncoupling of oxidative phosphorylation and it disrupts the cellular metabolism. And whenever the salicylate toxicity happens, the first sign is hyperventilation. So hyperventilation happens, they uh, exhume all that uh, CO2 from the body and uh, go into respiratory alkalosis. And respiratory alkalosis, when it happens, the body tries to eliminate bicarbonate from the body and that results in metabolic acidosis. You see, respiratory alkalosis, then bicarbonate is lost and body ends up in metabolic uh, acidosis. So remember that those steps. So if you take uh, arterial blood gases, you will see that mixed pattern of respiratory alkalosis and metabolic acidosis. That's an important point by itself. Now, um, they will have this disruption of oxidative phosphorylation and go into severe hyperthermia and uh, develop uh, uh, this dehydration. So when you treat these patients, it's very, very important that you do fluid, uh, uh, fluid uh, uh, rehydration so that uh, they can uh, get back uh, that fluid. So absorption of salicylate and the signs of uh, toxicity may be delayed in some cases, but ultimately they develop that uh, pattern, as I said, respiratory alkalosis and metabolic acidosis. So, when you treat these patients, if it is uh, like uh, um, contamination, you should do gastric lavage. If they take a lot of aspirin tablets, you can even think of a complete bowel uh, irrigation, or you can use activated charcoal. So, those are the initial steps and IV fluids to replace the fluid losses. And for moderate uh, intoxications, intravenous sodium bicarb. Remember, these patients lose bicarb. Body loses bicarb when the patient develops respiratory alkalosis. So you need to give them intravenous sodium bicarb. But when they develop uh, severe, like uh, more than like 100 milligrams per deciliter salicylate levels, they go into coma and severe acidosis. In those cases, they need emergency hemodialysis. So that's about aspirin. The most important points you need to remember are, are it is a very, very important antiplatelet medication and it has those wide-ranging benefits, as I, as I explained. And take some time today, if you have some time, to visit us at uh, www.drpaul.org. This is uh, an effort to help students preparing for uh, their examinations. We have hundreds of USMLE videos, PLAB videos, and also to educate the patients who are interested to take care of their health and to take care of their bodies. So visit us, and those of you who are taking USMLE examination, I recommend you to read USMLE Smasher. And this is a student-to-student -student guide, and so many cases are extremely um, important cases were explained and uh, I request you to read this book and it's very very useful that is USML Smasher and get this book on Accelibris or Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Thank you very much and uh, make some time to visit us at our, at our website today. Thank you.